Good evening and uh, welcome to the uh, moratorium committee's uh, information, public information uh, meeting. Uh, I'm Tony LaFountain, Penfield Town Supervisor. Tonight I'm acting as the uh, moderator. Uh, this uh, particular meeting is not a town board meeting, rather a meeting of the moratorium uh, committee. Uh, so let me uh, just provide a bit of, uh, a bit of history. So the moratorium committee uh, put in place uh, right after uh, the town board adopted a local law uh, to put a moratorium in place for a year. Uh, we established a, a committee shortly thereafter. Uh, the committee has met uh, on four occasions. Uh, that was an opportunity for them to uh, get to know one another, uh, to uh, have some information provided uh, to them uh, from staff and uh, other uh, experts. And uh, then part of that plan was then for them to uh, have a public information meeting. And the purpose of the public information meeting was to hear thoughts from the community about future uses of both Shadow Lake and uh, Shadow Pines. And so uh, we know that during the time that we put the moratorium in place, uh, that uh, Shadow Lake uh, uh, was then sold and has since closed. And uh, so uh, a lot of focus uh, has uh, been given to Shadow Pines. However, you know, one of the things that uh, you know, we have said, I have said to the committee, that as we are looking for recommendations back from them, we also want to have uh, recommendations on Shadow Lake as well. So while it's sold and while it's being used as a golf course, similar to what it has been for the previous 30 or more years, uh, what happens in three, five, ten years. And we don't want to be back in this room going through that process uh, again. So the recommendations back to the town board uh, are really for both properties, Shadow Lake and Shadow Pines, uh, as we go through. Um, I want, to, uh, I want to recognize uh, the uh, moratorium committee. Um, the board selected uh, 23 individuals uh, from a group of uh, more than 80. Uh, this is a, a very, I believe, a very well-rounded uh, group. And uh, I wanna, I've said it before, but I wanna take this opportunity, opportunity publicly to say thank you uh, to all the committee members uh, for your time commitment, your willingness to serve and to work uh, through this uh, process. I've had several members say to me, I didn't think it was gonna be as difficult uh, as it uh, has been. Um, but most of them are here tonight and I wanna just say thank you on behalf of the town and on behalf of the community. Thank you for your willingness uh, to participate. I also wanna recognize uh, our town staff, um, the three that uh, really have uh, been the go-to focal, uh, focal point. Uh, Mark Valentine, our town engineer and uh, director of planning. Uh, Zach Nursinger, who is, uh, works for Mark, and then Jim Costello, our development services uh, director. They really have been the link. Uh, and then Ron Peckham, who has been uh, the moderator or leader of that uh, group uh, overall. And I just want to say thank you to all of them uh, for their support uh, as well. We had originally asked the committee uh, to submit their uh, recommendations back to the town board uh, at the end of July. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the facilitator, Ron Peckham, uh, came to myself and then I went to the town board. And the concern was uh, maybe we were putting too much pressure to have it done by the end of July. And uh, so the town board agreed to extend it until uh, September 2nd uh, to allow that input uh, uh, back uh, to the town board. So they had that extra month to work on not only subcommittees but also the broader committee overall. Um, as a result of tonight's meeting, uh, anyone that speaks, uh, Lisa will be gathering high-level notes uh, for the committee that will be turned over to the committee members uh, for their review, uh, who spoke and what their particular interests uh, are. Um, there's also an opportunity on our website if you want to go in and actually fill out um, uh, a, a form uh, to uh, give us more detail. Uh, if you'd like to do that, I would certainly encourage that. That will get rolled up. I'm going to hold, I'm going to ask to have this meeting held open until the 30th of June uh, at such time then uh, what will happen is is that uh, town staff will gather all those thoughts put them in a package and uh, present them to the committee 
Uh, the committee is next meeting on July 12th. Uh, they'll have an opportunity, they'll have a couple of weeks uh, to take a look at uh, any and all comments uh, that come in, not only tonight here directly from uh, any and all of you, but also online as uh, well. Uh, tonight's uh, ground rules are uh, very, very straightforward, very simple. Um, anyone that uh, would like to address the board, or excuse me, address the committee, and again, you're speaking to the committee, address the committee and any thoughts that you have for either one or both of the properties. All we ask is that uh, you respect uh, the speaker uh, and uh, give them the opportunity to, uh, to address uh, their thoughts and their ideas uh, to the committee. And um, we're not uh, looking to get into a debate. Again, the committee wants to hear from you what your thoughts and uh, ideas are overall. At this time, I would like to uh, recognize uh, Ann Zeke. Ann is uh, one of the members of the, one of the 22 members of the committee. Ann has volunteered uh, with the support of 21 of her members pushing behind her uh, to, uh, to address uh, the audience tonight uh, about the work at a very high level uh, that the committee uh, has been doing. And uh, Ann, thank you again for uh, volunteering. So. Can you hear me? We can hear you. And you'll realize that we did not coordinate our comments. So good evening. My name is Ann Zeke, and I am a mem member of the. Uh, can move the mic, I move the mic up? Okay. Good evening. Can you hear me now? You still can't? I don't think it's on. Just, uh, Is it tap, on now? Just tap that if you would. It's on. Can you hear me now? Okay. Good Great. evening. My name is Ann Zeke, and I am a member of the Shadow Lake, Shadow Pines Community Advisory Committee. The town asked us to provide a brief, high-level overview tonight of the committee process to date. There are 22 of us on the committee, and we are supported by Penfield Town staff Jim Costello, Mark Valentine, and Zach Nursinger. That's a large group, and fortunately the town also retained a facilitator, Ron Peckham, to work with us. Ron has a tough job keeping us on track, mindful of time and schedule. He set some ground rules to help us work together and maintain structure and order in our meetings. I'd like to thank Ron, as well as Jim, Mark, and Zach for their help with this challenging task. We all came into this process with very different backgrounds. In preparation for our committee work, we were asked by the town to review the town's latest master plan and zoning law prior to the first meeting. At that first meeting, we received information about the formation of each golf course, and as a group, we developed six possible scenarios for the properties. That meeting ran long, and in fact, most of our meetings have run long. I think by the end of the first meeting, we all realized that time was going to be a precious commodity in our work, and as a result, we had an additional meeting in May added to our original schedule. At the second meeting, we worked to determine if the scenarios developed at the first meeting needed to be revised and discussed some areas to evaluate for each scenario. Areas to be considered were infrastructure, school district and taxpayers, environment, traffic, neighborhood and Penfield quality of life, and financial viability. We divided into subcommittees with each subcommittee tasked to perform a strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis, or SWOT analysis, in these areas for a specific scenario outside of the regular committee meetings. At the third meeting, each subcommittee presented their SWOT analysis and there were questions and discussion about much of the information presented. We also added another evaluation item to the list to investigate for each scenario, conformance with master plans, studies, and zoning. We then divided into new subcommittees, with each subcommittee independently examining one of the evaluation items for all scenarios. This was done partly to try to take an impartial or even critical look at each scenario, as there was a concern that when doing the SWOT analysis, we all chose a scenario we wanted to see happen and therefore might not effectively vet the scenario. I think with the second subcommittees, we also took advantage of our strengths, with many committee members gravitating towards the areas they had a background or some experience in. At our fourth and most recent meeting, each subcommittee again presented their findings. As you would expect, there were questions and discussion about much of the information. We still have some information to be presented, but in general, I believe we are close to starting to work through everyone's thoughts and opinions on what scenario, or scenarios plural, we should recommend to the town. I also think that at this point, many of us on the committee are extremely interested to hear your thoughts and ideas about the future of the properties. We've been very group focused to date, and many of us feel it is important to get a handle on public opinion. The town recently extended the due date for our report, and I think that's a good thing, as we still have much work to do. 
In closing, I believe that for many residents, these properties are a very important part of Penfield. I know they are for me. I'm very mindful of the importance of our work, and to paraphrase the supervisor's words to our committee, very likely the disposition of these properties will impact our community for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Uh, just a couple more comments, and then the reason we're here is to hear from uh, all of you. Um, the town board uh, has uh, kept uh, purposely an arm's length away from this pro uh, whole process. Uh, they have uh, indicated to all the committee members that are available uh, if there is any opportunity or need to, to meet with them. I have uh, personally met with a number of different uh, committee members per their request, uh, but the board uh, wanted to make sure that uh, this process uh, was uh, driven by the committee and not uh, being driven or perceived to be driven by the town. My final comment is, is that um, uh, a week doesn't go by where um, I do not uh, uh, provide an interview for uh, TV, radio, or uh, the local uh, newspaper. And uh, typically uh, what happens is, is that you spend three to five minutes for a 15 second um, uh, sound bite uh, that you see. And uh, what I'll say to you is, is that um, I've got broad shoulders, uh, I, I get a lot of criticism. Uh, today's most recent uh, criticism is, is that uh, the town, and specifically myself, uh, have this process already uh, cast in stone as to what it is. And uh, all I'll say to you is, is that, um, you know, uh, again, any interview that you do is a is a, a chop version of the time that you spend. And I'm always very careful to make sure that uh, I uh, let the media know uh, the broadest based information that I can. Um, so there hasn't been any final decision reached by the town board and we look forward to the hard work that the committee has uh, put forth. So to follow up on Ann's comments, uh, now is the time uh, to hear your, your comments and your views. Um, Lisa has a number of folks that have signed up, so we'll go in order uh, that she received those. If you haven't signed up, you don't have to rush to, to sign up. Uh, we'll get to uh, everyone. Uh, we want to get to everyone first. Any second time speakers, uh, we'll get through the first time speakers first, uh, then go from there. So with that, Lisa, uh, let's uh, start in order that, uh, that you have. Okay, the first three speakers to come up and sit in the chairs, Andre Sillins, Jason Hanna, and Rick Young. Great, thank you. Wow, first, um, my name's Andre Sillins. Do you need my address too? 23 Edgewood? Thank you. Um, just want to start off by saying, um, lifelong Penfield resident, so I've seen the town progress. I've uh, lived here all my life, went to school here, and haven't left. Um, I started watching the um, committee meetings actually after the most recent meeting and that got me intrigued and I started watching all of them and uh, I want to start by saying that was a great idea to extend the uh, deadline because I think that committee definitely wants that extra time and you can really see it in the meetings. Um, I saw a lot of passion in, in those meetings and you can tell that people really are there for the right reasons and they really want to be doing what they're doing. Um, and for that, I just want to say thank you because uh, you guys really are representing everyone in the community. And so, uh, you know, for that, I say thank you. Um, as I was watching, it really seemed like there were four or five different ideas that really started to, uh, you know, come to life and it seems like it's been a repetition over and over again. There's been this, this, this core of ideas. Um, and I think some of the things that I'd like to see that the moratorium committee look at and make as part of the recommendation is I think really to get those ideas going I think the town really needs to have a referendum to purchase shadow pines um, I think that's really going to be key I think if they can purchase shadow pines that should really be part of it um, and I really think the moratorium committee should spend a little bit of time looking at that as an option um, as actually purchasing the property um, along with another option as they should really rezone the property um, I think without either of those two pieces um, much of the ideas that we've heard about open space buffers, uh, parks, recreation, um, our town, you know, Dolomite Lodge, we have one of those lodges and it's always packed. It'd be great to see a few more of those out there um, and I think that'd be, a, you know, a great thing for people. Um, I really think th those, those are really my comments that, you know, the, some kind of referendum to purchase the property. I don't know how that process works. Um, 
but I really think that's one of the strong things along with rezoning it. Um, again, I'd like to thank the committee. Um, you guys really are doing a good job after watching all the movies for, I don't know, two hours a piece or so, but thank you. Thank you. Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Hanna. I live at 59 Skyview Lane, uh, back up to former uh, number six, uh, Shadow Pines. Um, it's kind of been hard to, to kind of watch the committee meetings. I've watched them too. Uh, thank you to everyone who's serving on the committee. Um, I, it's just amazingly beautiful property. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you drive all around Rochester and you really don't find property as beautiful as we have. And I, I, I would be uh, disappointed to, to see it be uh, developed in, with, with high density housing. I, I think uh, we, we, we would lose the, the beauty, we would lose that space that we have um, already. I, I'm concerned about the traffic. Um, it's already at times, uh, if you drive on Atlantic or you drive on Whalen, to get to the to get to anywhere around 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. or 8 a.m. It's 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 pretty difficult to get around. I'm concerned about the traffic. I've two daughters uh, just finished uh, fifth grade and first grade at Scribner. I'm a little bit concerned about uh, what that would mean for Scribner. I do like the idea I heard. Uh, I think it was in the third committee meeting uh, of potentially using the library space to add to to re. Uh, to do that again as a school and, and maybe moving the library over. I think that was interesting. Um, if we had to have houses, I would, if we can uh, have some space between them or, or do anything to, to not have 200, and, you know, when I heard 255, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, I, I like the idea. I think we, we've talked about a 100 foot buffer. That's a, that's a start for us who, who buffer or who, move up against the course. I think that any kind of buffer we can have is good. Um, I'm not a, I heard one idea of the of a cemetery. I'm not a huge fan of, of that uh, bordering up against our property, but anything we can do to kind of echo the last comments, maybe the, if, if we can somehow find a way to keep it, uh, uh, keep it as wild as we can. And, and the mixed use idea, if we can keep it somewhat, uh, you know, attractive, I think that has some merit too. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Good evening. Hello there. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say I, I have some prepared remarks here only because I'll probably forget to say what I want to say, so please excuse that. And I also uh, giving you a sort of a personal view since uh, I'm a little different. I'm a, I'm a golfer that's played at Shadow Pines for a number of years and love the course is a beautiful piece of property and to see that turn into a sea of homes would be a terrible mistake. Um, I'm also speaking for some people that can't speak, uh, people that are gone uh, physically and uh, they're, away from, they're away from Penfield for other reasons. So uh, with this in mind, I, it's a personal thing on my part. So. Here are the, here's what I'm gonna say. This morning I left our home in Pittsford and took a walk down behind our house through our woods, past our pond for a view of the Knickerbocker Farm. The history of the Knickerbocker Farm includes the sale by the Knickerbockers to the town of Pittsford of the property's developmental rights. There is no doubt that had the Knickerbockers not done this by preserving the farmland, it would have turned into a sea of houses. I ask each of you, if you have the time, to take a short trip down Knickerbocker Road, if you haven't done that, and see what I saw. A beautiful area of farmland with horses and corn just coming up right now, and a view of the distant hills. This is something that you will not see in the town of Penfield should you approve the development of this property known as Shadow Pines. It is a beautiful area which I have been enjoying for several years playing golf and my, with my friend Stuart and other people. 
He and I have had lots of fun playing against each other in the course itself. We grieve that we may not see this again if the moratorium committee and the town board do not act responsibly by listening to the residents of Penfield and preserving this area as a golf course or at least a park for the enjoyment of the residents now and in the future. I speak as a lover of the property for golf, but I understand there could be some competing interests down the road. The first step is to preserve the property is for the town to spend what I consider a small amount, approximately three million, maybe a little more, and purchase this property outright. I'm talking to people, they tell me and they agree with me that this is a no-brainer. It's something that, that makes so much sense. Using surplus funds or a small bond issue would easily accomplish this. After that, there could be future discussions as to what the property's highest and best use might be. The town's master plan is for the property to, to be used for recreation or as a sanctuary. I favor leasing the property now to a qualified operator as a golf course. After Dolomite exits its quarry, the quarry can be used as a lake for the enjoyment of the residents of Penfield along with some land that could provide trails for hiking and so forth. The golf course could be refigured to accommodate future uses. My um, deceased former wife, Lynn Taggart, and her family lived on Colonial Drive. She attended Penfield High School. My mother was a resident of Atria Penfield before her death. I made a promise to a former resident of the town of Penfield. Caroline Sentner and her parents, Bill and Dodo, lived at 1751 Penfield Road in the old farmhouse. Maybe you know of the family. She attended a wedding of my daughter Elizabeth recently and I promised her I would do my best to assure the residents of Penfield that Shadow Pines should not become what I term a sea of homes. Contrary to the wishes of the community, even though I'm not a Penfield resident, I can tell you that approving Shadow Pines for development would be a grave error that could never be undone. So I ask all of you on the moratorium committee and otherwise to support the town's purchase of Shadow Pines. You owe it to yourselves and to the future generations of this beautiful and historic town. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. The next three speakers, Phil Monahan, Tim Stout, and Mike Ruff. Welcome, Phil. My name is Phil Monahan. I live at 219 Milford Crossing over in Newberry Park. It's just down the road in Atlantic Avenue. I put my name in to speak only because I thought you had to uh, to present any remarks. My concerns are the fact that there's going to be, if a development goes through and 200 houses go in there, it's not 200 houses, it's 400 cars. And Whalen Road will have a significant traffic problem along with Atlantic Avenue. We're already going to increase the traffic at Five Mile Line and Atlantic Avenue with the 80 housing development, that 80 house development that's going in. Coming out early in the mornings, there are times when the traffic is backed up on Baird Road around, excuse me, on Atlantic Avenue, almost to Baird Road around the bend. And then when you finally get to Five Mile Line and Atlantic Avenue, and you sit there and you watch the traffic coming down on Five Mile Line and making rights, and blocking the access. I just foresee the future because of the intersection further down the road 
with the schools there and the school buses, the traffic is, is going to have a significant uh, increase. And I don't want to see Atlantic Avenue become a four-lane road. The issue also is, with that significant increase, are the schools going to be able to take the increase in the population? So are we going to have to build a new school? The land in that area is pristine. And for those of you that have driven through the Shadow Pines area, it's like going from congestion to the country in a matter of minutes. Your psyche changes from tension to relaxation as you drive home and come into Penfield. I fear that this could be like Ridge Road in Greece in the future. And I don't care to live in a place like that. So these are you know, personal concerns and issues in how is it going to change the town? How is it going to change that area? If it's feasible, we just passed the, what, a $76 million school budget for one year. I wouldn't, uh, like the previous speaker, I don't foresee the $3 million as being a big problem to try and purchase the property. I'd be willing to support a bond issue for it. And I don't like paying taxes, so uh, <laughs> this would be a big concern. Thank you. I agree with Phil. My name is Tim Stout. My wife and I moved into Penfield after living in Greece, of all places. Um, this is our eighth season in Penfield. We live at 2 Denonville Ridge, corner of Clark and Denonville. We've always had a view looking east of the course. I'm not a golfer, so I don't know which holes I've been looking at all these years. Uh, but I want to thank Tony and, and everyone who's put their time into this. Um, I can tell you I did a walk around what we call the two mile loop today around 4.30. So Clark to Atlantic, Wayland to Clark. Usually I bike that area and it's much different being on a bicycle having traffic come behind you than it is to walk and go towards traffic. Um, I stopped a couple of times to look at Shadow Pines in, in a different way than I've seen it in the past. And to echo what a lot of people have said, it is a beautiful course. It's, it's like nothing else. The, the size of the locust tree that's in front of the Clark House is, is incredible. There are trees that have probably been there for 250 years. And Tony, to, to quote you, the best way to keep from coming back into the same room in three or four years is to buy this property and have it be green space. Uh, we have kids who are nine and 10. We have a daughter who wants to ride her bike to Bay Trail in the fall. And right now, there's not a good way to get there. I am also concerned about the traffic on Atlantic. Um, I think that Shadow Pine should be repurposed for green space, recreational space, hiking trails, biking trails. I hope that the board will consider this. I also don't like paying taxes, but I've been paying them, and I'd, I'd like to see this go through as recreational and green space. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Gruff. I live at 35 Pond Valley Circle, and I'm disappointed that Rob, Linda, Paula, and Andy are not here. I want our town board to listen to us, I, so I hope that they will at least watch uh, our remarks, because well, I think they're I, going to What I'll be say to you, Mike, is, is that uh, they've watched all the committee meetings, and they're watching this evening. Okay. Rob, Linda, Paula, and Andy, my name is Mike Gruff. I'm going to speak to you four. I'm going to paint two pictures for you for the future of Penfield. Here's the first picture. The 200 acres of Shadow Pines goes under construction for 200, almost 300 homes by Ryan Homes. Our schools are bursting at the seams now, so Dr. Putnam back there has to add trailers to add at Cobbles, Bay Trail, and Penfield High School 
to educate my son, your grandchildren, in trailers to add to our schools, which are already at capacity. The roads at 441 and Browncroft are snarled with traffic and adding almost 600 homes, uh, 600 cars, Phil, will continue that congestion. That's picture number one, town board. Here's picture number two. The town board purchases Shadow Pines for open green space with a 20-year bond, ensuring that this land is preserved for our future generations. We transform these 200 acres into ball fields for our residents for use of softball, soccer, lacrosse. We have a natural walking park for the elderly and our youth to walk. We add a dog park for all of our four-legged friends to frolic. All of that is in the town master plan. All of that is in the open space plan. This is a seminal moment for Penfield. We need to save Shadow Pines. Please leave a positive stamp on Penfield. Thank you, town board. Claudia Thomas, Lori Ayakuza, and Kate McArdle. Hi, Claudia. Yeah, I was just going to say, just pull that. There you go. <laughs> Some of this you've heard before, but uh, I'm sorry. Oh, some of this you've heard before, but um, I feel very sad. I live at 1911 Clark Road, which is between Huntington Meadows and the hill, and on that stretch of land, there are only three houses, and I'm in the middle. Um, the, as most of you know, the speed limit on Clark Road is 25 miles an hour, and um, the deer happen to cross, and it's never all together, it's one at a time. And when I happen to be coming home and see that there's a procession about to go on the golf course or vice versa, and I see someone speeding around the bend coming down the hill, I will politely make a motion to slow down. Well, they go faster, or I've even been um, passed several times, so people don't pay attention to the speed limit as a rule. Um, and I'm concerned about um, the the loss of old trees, as some of uh, someone has brought up, and also the loss of wildlife. Aside from the usual suspects, the deer, the raccoons, the fox. Um, I, um, we also have wild turkeys, which are protected in New York State, and I've even sighted a golden eagle on the back of the property, and actually I have a witness to that. And there's also a much smaller creature, which is a flying squirrel. I have sev several colonies on the property. Um, I'm, I'm Kent, comment too much on um, Shadow Lake because I've on only been there as a patron of the restaurant, <laughs> but obviously my concern is Shadow Pines. And I re really would appreciate that um, no houses be built there and that it be used for uh, green space or other, other um, suggestions that have been made. So, that's my recommendation. Great. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for coming out. Lori? Hi. I'm Lori. I accuse I live at 3504 Atlantic Avenue. This is pertaining to the Shadow Pines property. Um, I would like to ask all of you to stop for a minute and think how it was when we were kids. There were dense woods everywhere beautiful golf courses, and when I saw, I mean, we saw wildlife, we were in awe of their beauty. Now, the same wildlife people fear because they are in their backyards. 
On your way home tonight, please pay attention to the wooded areas that are so dense, there aren't many of them left. Because of the so-called progress, we build homes in wooded areas, and in this case, probably shadow pines, and like this golf course, if it does not remain the way it is, there will be more than likely more houses to be built and more wildlife in people's backyards. I have seen on the news constantly people complaining about wildlife in their backyards. Well, here's the question. If we keep building, taking their spaces away, where are they supposed to go? They are running out of room to live. Hi, Kate. Hi there, uh, Kate McArdle, 15 Hillside Road. I too wanna thank everyone, uh, thank you, Tony, and the committee um, for the opportunity to speak tonight. I also wanna thank all of the people sitting in this room tonight. Uh, it's a beautiful, gorgeous night out, and it's the last day of school for many of us, and I'm sure everyone here has something else better that they would like to do, and it's terrific to see so many people um, here this evening. Like many others, I spent a thrilling uh, what eight hours watching all of the moratorium committee meetings, and I really want to acknowledge specifically the members that are volunteering their time on that committee. Um, this community certainly thanks you and thanks you for your time. Uh, I do question if this group of people accurately represents, represents this community. Uh, Penfield is a more diverse community, I feel, that this than the committee represents. Also, um, there are six people on the open space committee, 30%. If you surve surveyed or conducted a vote of the 36,000 people that are in this community, do you think that 30% of the people in this town would consider um, would only consider um, that open space as an option, I think it would be much more than 30%. So please think about that moving forward. If the board is making decisions based on the moratorium committee's recommendations, it's important to note that such a bias exists on this committee. A much, a much higher percentage of resources on that committee are going to research, researching and exploring development options. That to me is unacceptable. I, I work at the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute at RIT. Every day I have the pleasure of working with companies, community organizations, and individuals whose job it is to, is to create a more uh, sustainable New York State. We're very lucky our tax dollars pay for that too, so you can thank yourselves. Um, I mention this for a few, re a few reasons. First of all, to be transparent, I'm also biased in my view of uh, um, wanting susta a sustainable community. Um, I'm surrounded by people every day uh, that are capable of problem solving very, very complex environmental issues. I have an understanding that in order to create a truly sustainable community, we must balance the social, economic, and environment environmental elements of our society. <clears throat> While I'm sure that the moratorium committee and the board are aware of this fine balance, I'm going to take a few minutes to share my major concerns with the context of maintaining this very important equilibrium. We have a large group of citizens that have moved to Penfield specifically for its open space and its award-winning schools. We have folks also that have lived here for so many generations, um, whether it be on the east side in large family farms or neighboring uh, shadow pines in communities. The current town board and the board prior continued in the footsteps of plan progress in many ways, winning awards in 2002 for the open space plan and more recently um, with a responsible and well thought out 2012 comprehensive plan. <clears throat> Sorry, I have so many written notes here. I, um... So we have this document, the comprehensive plan, that a lot of effort went into, and it benefits the health and well-being of the residents. It addresses the social and environmental elements of maintaining and um, having sustainability in our community. It shows our intent was to have this land as recreational. Yes, it is not zoned exclusively as such. This is your error. That, 
That is the error also of many administrations before you. This is an error that now needs to be fixed. That lack of forethought and planning which occurred can now be fixed, right? It can be fixed. Yes, there may be legal ramifications. Yes, it may be a difficult process, but if we don't attempt to mend these issues now, we will fail future generations. We will fail my children's generation. We will fail your grandchildren's generation. We will fail the environment. This land is the heart of Penfield. If developed, it will forever change the quality of life for a majority of your residents as traffic increases, population increases, taxes increase, schools scramble to accommodate new students. We will lose one more migratory stop for wildlife, countless trees and flora, and we will literally pave the way for erosion increase stormwater pollution and create an additional strain on our town's current infrastructure. Will a possible tax base truly offset the environmental, social, and economic costs? Please show me these numbers. Please convince me that they will. <clears throat> If developed, how do you feel that the, po the possible new residents will like living next to a quarry? <clears throat> will the young families there, will the young families there love that their soil is overloaded from pesticide residue from a golf course and heavy metals? Will they love that? Will the parents of the young children that love it, that, that love, Sorry, will, the, will their parents of, of the young children that love, will they love that there's a deep ravine in their backyard in walking distance from their new cookie cutter homes? While I love the idea and I love the intention of a community driven group uh, that is the moratorium committee, it may be that these members are not looking at the problem at, as a, in a balanced way with the economic, social, and environmental elements that this problem presents. It is my hope that the town board and this committee will continue to look at this problem as a, as, as a whole element. <clears throat> Sorry. It is time for the board to have the hard conversations, to increase the effort. As somebody said earlier, it is time to have a referendum to purchase this land. <clears throat> It is time to problem solve and create sustainable long-term solutions, no matter what obstacle seems to be in the way. It is time to fund and maintain open space as a priority in our budget. It is time to maybe reach out to the Land Trust Alliance the Nature Conservancy. The Environmental Protection Fund this, for this state currently now has $300 million in it with major increases for land conservation. It is now time to work with Senator Funky and our other elected state and federal officials to get these dollars for Penfield. This town has acquired these open space funds before and we can do it again. I wanted to say one last thing, sorry, please don't cut me off. Um, this week, uh, our, one of the most prized people in this community passed away, uh, former supervisor Irene Gossin, and I wanted to say that I'm speaking on her behalf tonight. Donna Spinelli. Robin Pajeric and Carol Southby. You're up, Donna. Hi, my name, my name is Donna Spinella. I live at 39 Scarborough Park. Thank you. Uh, like, like most everybody here, I try to tell the truth all the time. And I think so does everybody else in this room. It's just, it's just how we're built. 
And we, we not only value, but we expect the truth from others too. For 32 years, Dolomite, owned by Old Castle, who own all of the land in question, have filed mined land use plans with the DEC. Why? Because of the quarry. Now these plans clearly state, the mined use plans that are filed every year and that are endorsed by the DEC every year, clearly state that the land to the north, west, and south of Whalen Road and Clark Road intersection, in other words, Shadow Pines, is to be developed as parkland and will be an attractive addition to the town of Penfield conforming with their master comprehensive plan. This master plan, Penfield's master plan, has designated this land as recreation and sanctuary from the get-go. It has not been ever designated as anything else in the town master plan. Nowhere in the plans that Old Castle submits every year that get, that get endorsed by the DEC every year, nowhere do the plans state that the land is going to be sold for development. These mind, use, the mind land use plans essentially are a lie. Lying to the DEC and lying to the townspeople of Penfield if in fact this land is going to be used for some other purpose than, than what was stated. It kind of violates the social contract, I think, with all of us. Preserving the land that Shadow Pine sits on in some form of open space is one of the only ways to really uphold the town's master plan, to stick with what was initially in the mind land use plan, and to give both a benefit to all town residents in Penfield and to preserve the character of our town. Thank you. Hi, my name is Robin Pajeric. I live at 18 Huntington Meadow. And uh, I, I have, uh, a lot of people have spoken tonight about the traffic on various roads. I'd like to speak um, about the traffic on Huntington Meadow. Uh, already we've had to have the six speed put, humps put in and an, unfortunately if you have a large uh, framed vehicle, um, they find it easier to go 60 miles an hour over those speed humps. They just fly over them and we've had children before hit on that street. Um, ask yourself, what, we're the only cut through street left to get to the village. Ask yourself what's going to happen when, if those houses are built. As it is right now at rush hour, if you're trying to make a left hand turn onto Panorama Trail, you can sit there for as much as 10 minutes to make that left hand turn. And that's without the 290 homes being built. Um, I'm very concerned about what traffic's going to be. Uh, second of all, I was under the impression that the Clark House, the, the, the golf course uh, house was uh, preserved, historic, and that they had to take care of it. Um, is that true or not? And if so, I, I had mentioned at the last meeting that uh, when uh, uh, IBM shut down their golf course, their historic house was left to rot, the heat was turned off, the floors buckled, the ceilings caved in, and people tagged the building. Um, is anything being done about that to, to require them to keep that up? And um, third of all, the grass has been growing so high it's gotten dangerous to make left-hand turns onto Wayland Road and I see somebody finally cut it back at least at the intersection. Did the town do that and are billing them or did they actually, the owners of the property actually come out and do that? And if they did, can they be required to at least cut the grass along uh, Clark Road because it's getting really ugly looking. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Robert. Hi, Carol. Hello, sir. I've got a horrible cold, so I hope I don't dissolve into spluttering here. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the, um, all the volunteers on the committee who are working so hard on this. Um, though I would like to point out from what I noticed on May 10th that the spokesperson Anne Zika is in a definite minority in that group. I noticed five women out and 16 men. <laughs> I think that is not entirely representative of the balance of the population in Penfield or anywhere else 
in the country. But anyway, that's um, an aside. I do support keeping Shadow Pines and Shadow Lake as open space. All the financial evidence I've seen shows that um, if this is developed for housing, it will actually cost each and every Penfield resident more money every year than if the land is purchased by the town and saved as green space. Uh, there's a, um, a myth that it ha Thank you. <laughs> It seems to be a myth that we have to develop because that's what saves people money. In this case, if you look at the numbers, it's exactly the opposite. So that means that if this site is developed, we would all pay twice. In our taxes in an, and in our decreased quality of life. For more building, uh, from more building and more congestion on the roads. We've got here a unique opportunity for the town to look at the long-term quality of life of all its residents, and actually to live up to its slogan and be the town of plan progress. Uh, I also like to echo um, an uh, earlier speaker, which is that we could follow in the footsteps of um, Irene Gosson, a former Town, Penfield Town Supervisor who passed away this week and she was a champion of saving green space in the town. Certainly it's important to keep a buffer to the current working quarry and also important to consider the future because when the quarry is decommissioned um, at that time without active pumping the quarry will very rapidly turn into a lake. And if so, that could potentially be um, vital to have some useful park space close to the lake. Uh, also a reminder that the um, town's 2010 comprehensive plan designated the future use of both the golf courses uh, and the quarry as recreation and sanctuary. So I think it's important to honor that as far as we possibly can. As time goes by, keeping shadow pines as green space will be increasingly important for the quality of life of residents of Penfield because let's face it, development is going to continue and we, we're going to need places that we can actually get away from the um, building and enjoy a uh, quality of life in a natural environment. Green, uh, hiking in, in um, natural areas is very important for people's welfare. Uh, the number of cars parked at the Corbett's Glen Nature Park on Penfield Road in Brighton demonstrates the increasing popular popularity of this type of trail and has the potential to bring uh, people to the businesses in downtown Penfield. And yet, as we look at it, Penfield itself is actually lacking in its own large park spaces. Uh, mostly we have uh, ball fields, um, the only property of any significant size that is um, a natural area is Sherwood Fields out on the very far west of the town. That's 82 acres. At 220 acres, Shadow Pines um, vastly outnumbers the amount of green space, uh, natural green space we have. Uh, most of the parks within the town are considerably smaller than 82 acres and for the most part they're playing fields. And there's an important um, use for playing fields, but there are relatively few natural areas in the town that are owned by the town. So acquiring Shadow Pines alone would almost double the total park acreage owned by the town and allow the opportunity for recreation for all its residents, not just those using um, ball fields. Uh, Shadow Pines already has paved trails that were used by the golf carts. So these wouldn't, we wouldn't need to do any mowing to actually keep the trails open. And these would be handicapped accessible. Imagine that. It, this would probably be one of the largest handicapped accessible um, trail systems in the region, if not the country. I don't know of anywhere that's, that's this huge. So a beautiful long trail system, immediately accessible to wheelchairs, uh, people with walking difficulties. That would be a unique selling point in the town. And I'm not ad advocating intensive management here. Um, if it wishes, obviously the town could in part 
increase the number of playing fields uh, that I understand are currently at a premium in the town, but mostly this green space vision would allow a natural progression to forest with only limited mowing and minimal maintenance needed from the town. So I urge the town of Penfield to buy this property for the benefit of all its residents, uh, change the zoning uh, to open space for both areas, for both the golf courses, and please do not risk further delay. The possibility of losing this opportunity, this open land, because if we lose it, it's gone, and it's gone forever. Thank you. Jeff Burns, Carol Samuel, and Mel Callen. Hey, Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff Burns. Uh, I'm one of the uh, founders of Save Shadow Pines, along with uh, Mindy McLaren and Kate McCardle. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, we have uh, had a, a rotation of a committee that's uh, had dozens of people that have participated, and we've had over 1,400 people who have liked our Facebook page and have uh, obviously shown a great interest in preserving Shadow Pines. And I want to thank everyone, and everybody who's been speaking tonight has done a great job. Um, it's obviously very clear that uh, the community wants this land to, be, to stay as open space. Uh, one thing I wanted to do tonight, though, is that uh, I wanted to find out who here is from the moratorium committee. I, I have no idea who I'm speaking to, and I'm supposed to be addressing the moratorium committee tonight. So, all right, from what I understand, there were uh, 22 people in the moratorium committee. Okay, so I hope everyone is here, and otherwise I know that they'll be uh, watching on TV or uh, the, the videotape. But thank you also for your service. I appreciate the work that you've done. Uh, in a nutshell, there are three things that need to be done. We need to zone for open space. We need to create a category for conservation land or open space. It's long overdue in this town. We need to buy shadow pines. It is a no-brainer. When we look at what the property tax increase would be if this changed over to uh, residential development, we'd, lose, we'd be paying a, th a million dollars in extra school property taxes according to some of the figures that we've heard from the school district itself. If we purchase this land, uh, say at about $3 million, which is an amount that the moratorium uh, committee has talked about, uh, we'd have a bond issue that would cost about $200,000 a year for 25 years. This would be a net savings of $800,000 a year. So just on a financial basis, it makes sense. Other reasons for rezoning uh, is that the Old Castle DEC filings, as other people have mentioned, uh, for 30 years have indicated the land uh, surrounding the quarry would be used in a way that's consistent with the master plan and that it would be uh, eventually a town park. And they included drawings to this extent. I'd like to read something to you from the 1966 master plan as to how this open space came to be. In the master plan it says, one further question concerning industrial land use in Penfield has to do with the stone quarry at Whalen Road. In the past, when this, was part, when this part of Penfield was sparsely settled, the quarry was not particularly objectionable. Recently, however, residential development has occurred in the vicinity of the quarry and before long will pro probably surround it on all sides. Under these circumstances, the blasting, crushing, trucking, and other operations associated with the quarry will become increasingly objectionable. It is therefore recommended in 1966 that the quarry be discontinued within the approximate period covered by the master plan. Now another master plan came in there after that, and I have parts from the master plan from 1984. It is at present the, the quarry, a non-conforming use under the town zoning ordinance, and thus the town may in a, be, be in a position to require its discontinuance, provided a reasonable period is allowed for its amortization. So back in 1966, the town had the right to say to Dolomite that they should close that quarry within a reasonable amount of t time and that they could amortize their investment in that land. That never happened. So. Dolomite knew that they were going to be in a bind. There was more residential property coming in around that area. So I look at the mind use plan 
starting in 1984 and which is currently approved by the DEC. And now they say that they're going to keep that land and use it as a buffer. They own 525 acres of land in the vicinity of their quarry. And it says here in the 1984 and current plan from uh, Dolomite, in general, surrounding land use trends are not affected by the mining operation due to the large amount of undeveloped buffer zones owned by Dolomite and by the relatively low key development of other adjacent areas. So what we see here is that nothing should be built real close to, to, that, to that quarry and Dolomite knew that at the time and they set aside that land so that it would be used as a buffer. Now I know that the idea of mixed use has come up in this area and I can come up with a couple of reasons why that wouldn't be appropriate. One of them is, is that, uh, as many of you know, uh, the long-term plan has been discussed. This entire area, when this is reclaimed, could be a lake and is planned to be a lake according to the plans that Dolomite has submitted. Now, do we want to limit the future board so they couldn't reconfigure this road, for, for example, a little bit or be able to set more land around this lake? Consider what the value of this lake will be. Uh, whenever that occurs. Uh, and this can be planned so that there could be uh, a gentle slope in the lake so that you don't have a 300 foot drop when you go in the lake. But if we plan in advance, we'll have enough room that we can create a slope and this would be very, very valuable land. So again, it's a no brainer, it seems to me, for the town to hold on to this land and have that future option. This land is only going to increase in its value, especially to the town. And it may be possible if we, if we can't keep this as a golf course and we have this as open space, it may be possible that, that future uh, town boards could look at this and do some smart development up here that would repay the costs that we have now and any additional costs. And we can in fact probably come out ahead as a community in many ways. So Jeff, you were pointing to uh, Shadow Lake, so you're saying buying Shadow Lake as oh, well? I was pointing to Shadow Pines. Oh, I was no, talking that's about Lake. this. No, this is Shadow Pines. Oh, Shadow Pines. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Shadow Lake's over here. Right. Did I say Shadow Lake? No. Okay. My mistake. Okay. My mistake. So, the other thing I wanted to say about this is that uh, this is, I talk so loud I don't even need the mic, I'm sorry, uh, is that uh, this isn't just for the benefit of the neighbors of Shadow Pines. This is for the benefit of the entire community. We all benefit from this. It has been, has been mentioned already that property taxes would be lower if we purchase this land than if it is allowed to develop, that we'll have less congestion, and that we'll have the, the, the great, uh, wonderful quality of green open space there that we can all enjoy. So I encourage the uh, moratorium committee to really take to heart what the community is saying here, that we want this land protected. We want the entire bit of land protected. We don't want mixed use there. We don't want to have uh, a retirement community there. Don't want to have uh, 255 houses. What we'd like there is to have open space and to have the future options for future generations. I'm Carol Samuel and I live at number 27 Huntington Meadow. Before I begin my remarks, I would like to ask if Lorenda Goransky is here. She was earlier. She was earlier? I saw her. She's sat in the row with us. Okay. Her driver's license. I'll make sure she gets it. I, I, I can get it back to her. She show Do I trust this fellow? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, as Jeff just thanks the moratorium committee, I would like to seriously thank Save Shadow Pines Committee. I have a feeling we would not even be here if it weren't for that small group of people. And I'm serious, I'm looking at some of my friends that I've met on that committee. They have the heart of Penfield in their hearts. I understand that 20, 81 people volunteered to serve on this moratorium committee and it was narrowed down to 22. A facilitator was chosen from out of town, hopefully to be an unbiased person. I have attended two of the four moratorium committees at which citizens can only sit and observe. Can't speak because it's their meeting. 
That doesn't mean I wasn't screaming inside of myself. It was supposed to be well-rounded. And as you heard someone else say, there's only seven people who live near Shadow Pines. So don't think they can add any clout to the end decision. I am very concerned that the majority have something to do with development. And development, as you hear from many of us, is not what we want. I would also like to speak about the facilitator, Mr. Packham. He actually scheduled this gathering for tomorrow night in the idea that we had a time crunch and we needed to get this out, this information from the moratorium committee out or get community input into the moratorium committee. Do you all know what's happening tomorrow night? High school graduation. Oh my, there might be 800 people, some of whom would really want to be here if it was scheduled for tomorrow night. And when he was told that by the school board representatives that they would not be here, he said, well, that doesn't really matter. He didn't feel it was a problem, so thank you for allowing this date to happen instead of tomorrow night. I am concerned about the end of the moratorium committee recommendations being popular by background. Uh, another thing that I noticed with Mr. Peckham one evening was that he particularly tried to stymie Sam Ogie, who lives with his backyard on Shadow Pines, as Sam tried to pursue one more topic. And Mr. Peckham said, Sam, you're running this down into a rabbit hole. I didn't think that was a very respectful way to treat one of the hardest working members of, this of the moratorium committee. <laughs> Folks of Penfield, the town board has let us down in the past. We, the citizens of Penfield, are feeling it. This could all have been avoided if the rezoning had reflected what was suggested for this property, that it was recreational green area. But oh, there was a golf course there. And you know what? It's always going to be a golf course. Not since January. So town board, don't let us make another mistake. And that night that I was sitting there and listening to Mr. Peckham, oh yes, that's right, we have to add this one other category to discuss, that of zoning. Oh, that had sort of slipped from the blackboard. Well, folks, I have lived in my house since 1974, three doors from Shadow Pines. We watched it go from a field, a cornfield, to a beautiful golf course. We were concerned then about the traffic that that might attract. Ha! That's nothing. <clears throat> I recall the slogan, we live in a town of planned progress. Is that still our, prog our slogan? If it is, let's seriously consider planned progress. We don't seem to have a town of commercial enterprise. We have several areas where there are empty commercial buildings. So if Mixed use for commercialism is needed. Let them choose those buildings. And folks, this does not really affect only those of us around Shadow Pines. I recently went out to Webster. Whalen Road, Atlantic. The traffic was backed through the traffic light and people were trying to get through before it turned yellow or red. I decided to go Scribner Road all the way out to Plank, and that gave me a better way to go. They'll get tired of that soon. Um, this does affect all of us. And the schools to be built, because we know those 86 houses that are going to be built already in progress on the corner of Five Mile Line and Atlantic, which now looks so bare, but it will be filled with cookie cutter houses or something like that will over 
will meet the quota of how, what our schools can manage at this point. So okay, so we build another school or we add on to schools. And that's a single cost. But you know what? We have teachers, we have maintenance, we have social workers, we have nurses, we have school bus drivers, we have everything which will go on forever and ever as an expense, including their retirement benefits. So Penfield, this really does affect our entire community monetarily, green space, comfort of living, the whole nine yards. Thank you. Mel. Good evening. My name is Mel Callen. I live at 1410 Harris Road. Full disclosure, I'm not a golfer, and I do own uh, seven acres with my husband in East Penfield, so I'm surrounded by beautiful farmland. So I don't live near Shadow Pines, but I care about this issue very much. I also want to take a moment also to add to the uh, commendation for uh, Supervisor Irene Gossin, as I'm sure you do, Tony. She, you worked with her as even a staff person. And also to acknowledge Mindy McLaren and the audience who recently purchased 18 acres on Five Mile Line Road to keep this open space in Irene's honor it was dedicated to her. And I was fortunate to be at the dedication and she, it was just with the three weeks ago, she was sharp as a wit and brought humor to the ceremony as well as the seriousness of keeping open space and, and protecting our environment. So thank you Mindy and thank you Irene. Um, I also would like to add my thanks to the moratorium committee. I know it's not an easy job and I'm sure it's turning out to be more than what you bargained for, but uh, thank you for your, your time and effort. I also, like many others, have witnessed many of the meetings and uh, it can be grueling and there's been some contention, some confusion, um, but I think you are working towards the goal of making these recommendations and I hope that you all hear what the vast majority of residents are saying tonight. I would also like to thank Tony and the town board members for listening to the residents and uh, establishing the moratorium. And as you've repeated many times, Tony, it is for both pieces of property, Shadow Lake and Shadow Pines. So my comments are a request, clarification, and some observations. First and foremost, the request, like many previous speakers, to preserve Shadow Pines as open space and for the, the town to purchase the land, no question about it as was done many years ago for the open space plan with a $10 million bond that was approved overwhelmingly by the community, primarily for development of farmland rights, uh, development rights for farmland. Um, the moratorium, as stated, was, is both for the Shadow Lake and Shadow Pines. Shadow Lake is purchased and now remains as a golf course. However, both properties are zoned residential for almost 90 years. After purchasing Shadow Pines, the town can begin a discussion of rezoning, finally. In an earlier town board meeting, town attorney, Mr. Horowitz, stated that everything, including amortization and rezoning, is on the table. The resolution itself states to consider current and possible future zoning. Now, just some clarification. Um, it did seem strange that at one of the meetings, the most recent one as a matter of fact, the facilitator did not think it was important for uh, moratorium committee members to attend the, tonight's meeting and that the comments probably would not alter their thinking as they've been working on it for four meetings. Um, fortunately, Supervisor LaFountain did send a, a letter to the moratorium committee members um, acknowledging this. So it was important for them to be at tonight's hearing and to hear what the public had to say uh, about this issue as it may alter the thinking. And that's, I'm sure, what we hope for. It did, that confusion and that statement from the facilitator did cause a lot of discussion and there, it d definitely caused some confusion. But thanks to Supervisor LaFountain, it was clarified. Um, and I do wish, I know that there was opportunity for moratorium committee members to walk the property. Um, I do wish that more than three had signed up for it. I know some had, had been on the property either as golfers or for some other reason, but I think to walk it together as a group, I think could be an eye opener and I would make that suggestion. 
Um, and then finally, as, for as far as transparency is concerned, at one of the meetings, the town board public participation meetings, um, Councilman Moore mentioned that uh, he read the minutes of the moratorium committee. Um, and I played that over and over because I have gone on the website many times and I didn't see any minutes. And then I asked a couple of people on the moratorium committee and they don't get minutes. So um, I'm wondering, you know, maybe he meant notes or something, but he did state that he's read the minutes and he wanted to clarify something. So um, I want to clarify, are there minutes? And they really should be available. There should be minutes for one. They should be available on, certainly to the committee members themselves, but also to the public. So if you go online, you should be able to read at least a, a key summary of the minutes. Um, and residents were encouraged at another town um, board meeting, the public participation aspect, to submit comments and suggestions to the committee via the town's website. Um, and I know that was done by many people, but those comments have not been seen by the committee members yet. I, I gather, especially hearing some tonight's comments, that perhaps they were waiting for tonight to gather all the, the uh, comments and the suggestions that are being made for the committee. However, I think if they were submitted to the committee members as they were coming in, that it would allow to, you know, be included in the dis discussion within the four meetings they've had thus far. And so the comments that it just might have been a more expeditious use of the committee members' time. and. Tonight's comments might have been duplicative, but also some additions. So I just think when, when town residents are encouraged to submit their comments to the committee via the website, that they immediately be available to the committee members. Um, and then as far as viewing the, um, the meetings on Vimeo per the website or YouTube, I don't know if anyone else has had as much difficulty as I have, but it takes me a lot longer because of all the pauses. Um, and so that brings me to the issue of why we can't have it replayed on public television. And that's what I would hope for, for all the committee meetings, but particularly this is very important. Many of us can't be there, and you poor committee members, you're there over two hours. Your meetings are supposed to last up to two hours. I know that most of them have lasted over two hours. So it was taking a lot of time from, from your family and your personal life. Um, so I try to watch them on, on Vimeo or uh, YouTube, and it is very distracting because there's these constant pauses. So, you know, we have a wonderful cable television in Penfield, and it just hasn't been up and running uh, on television since September because of needed updated equipment. Uh, the town board hasn't allocated the funding for that. And so I thought, well, you know, what, what was the original plan? And so when I went to Penfield Town Board Resolution 183 from September of 2005, uh, the adoption of this um, resolution, the first where is, the Penfield Town Board recognized the need to provide standards for continuing provision of public education and government in television in Penfield. So I would encourage the town uh, to reconsider purchasing the updated necessary equipment. Even the, the school district is very frustrated. If you go to their website, you see the, the encouragement to, con to contact town board members and encourage them to purchase updated and needed equipment. And finally, under the local law number one of video standards, um, under the purpose, the first one is uh, to satisfy present and future needs. The cable video system should accommodate both the present and foreseeable, foreseeable future communication needs of town residents. This town resident has a need to watch it on television. Um, and the, uh, the cable video system must be improved so, and so upgraded. Now, this, I mean, the purpose of tonight's meeting is, is for the committee to hear recommendations as it relates to Shadow Lake and Shadow Pines. I understand. Uh, so I would, I would ask, I mean, I would ask that there'll be, there is plenty of opportunity in the past and certainly in the future to have broader conversations, but tonight really the benefit is for the committee members to hear thoughts uh, for uh, possible use of Shadow Lake and Shadow Pines. I could appreciate that, Supervisor LaFountain. It's my frustration in trying to obtain information about the ongoings for the committee of the moratorium committee that has been extremely frustrating for me to obtain the information and understand what the committee proceedings have been about. So this is all I see as part of it. 
Um, so I will just finish up with the last part of the cable video system must be improved and upgraded during the franchise term to keep pace with technological innovation and meet the future needs of the community. So I see the future needs of the community uh, needing, uh, whether it's broadband ability or the, the upgraded community television equipment, but it's proceedings like this moratorium committee that are so vitally important to us as residents. And you're hearing an overwhelming support about the issue to purchase the property, but also some aspects of the committee proceedings themselves. And I'd like to be able to understand and view it without that, that unnecessary interruption because I can't watch it on TV. Thank you very much. Bill Sullivan. Hi, Bill. Good evening. My name is Bill Sullivan. I live at 1899 Clark Road. I want to see that the Shadow Pines area is kept as an open area, and I have a specific proposition which I hope may give some armament to make that happen. First of all, how many of you have visited the quarry uh, facility itself? Okay. A few, uh, half, a quarter of the people. It is a terrifying facility. 20, 273 feet deep, straight down. Um, a good uh, uh, a barbed wire fence put in nine years ago after someone was killed falling into the, uh, into the quarry. Okay. I don't have any knowledge of the master plan, but I know for doggone sure why Shadow Pines area was purchased. It was purchased as a buffer to that quarry. You, you all know what Shadow Lake was like uh, 35 years ago. Thou hundreds and hundreds of kids every night in there swimming. And so the Odenbachs uh, uh, purchased the, the buffer land to make the quarry more uh, uh, safe. And uh, uh, why don't we build golf courses there? And that's how the golf course has happened. Every DEC yearly evaluation of why they sh the, uh, the uh, uh, license should be renewed did not mention the uh, compatibility with the uh, town master plan. It uh, 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 answered a series of questions about whether complaints about the blasting every year. Each year, the same response. We have no concerns about the blasting because we have kept all residential area completely separated via the buffer zone. The price of the property at 3-2, everybody says, well, we can handle that one way or the other. I absolutely feel that there is more than enough ammunition to go to um, Old Castle, I believe the owner of the property today, and say, look at guys, to minimize the probability that we will have more than one or two deaths a year from little kids walking in there, and anybody can walk right in that facility anytime they want. They can't get past about a quarter of a mile down unless they go over the 
the fence. Um, there are so many reasons, uh, as you all know, that uh, I believe that Old Castle could negotiate with us for a million dollars, not the three point two million dollars, and I think that difference would make uh, the opportunity to buy uh, to set up an open plan much simpler to uh, implement. So. That is my proposition. If you want to see, I spent a whole day down in uh, uh, at the DEC going through the uh, monthly, uh, the yearly uh, reports. There's enough information there uh, to, in any sense, to get Old Castle to do some negotiations, or are they prepared to take the two or three deaths a year that are going to happen to those little kids that have only got a hundred yards to go and they're they're over a cliff uh, I can't believe. so that's my simple proposition focus on uh, the the not the zoning so much but the fact that we need a buffer zone in that area and see if we can't negotiate a couple of million dollars off of that price my best Bill Sullivan <laughs> So we have uh, reached uh, all the list of everyone that has signed up. Is there anyone that hasn't spoken yet that would like to address the committee? I see this uh, gentleman right here, number one. Uh, behind them, uh, there's a lady, and then the, our Boy Scout right, uh, right here. So if you please uh, come forward, and then we'll get over on this side of the room. So again, if you would uh, 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 name and uh, address uh, for the record, please. Good evening, my name is Robert Colangelo. I live at 1925 Clark Road, right across the street from Shadow Pines. Uh, I've been there since 1995. Um, I had a different thing, set of things I wanted to say, but a lot of people have preempted me, so I'll try to uh, reorganize the thoughts a little bit. Um, leveraging what Bill just said, um, the reality is that we have documents going back to 1966, 1966, where both the town and filings with DEC from uh, the owners at the time coincide that this, there has to be a buffer space. So in thinking about all that's gone on since this whole discussion began, uh, sort of my anger shifted from Dolomite to the town. We have no way to enforce what Bill just said. We have, there are no mechanisms that were put in place from 1966 until now to protect that land from a technical standpoint. Forget about the birds and the bees and the, and the butterflies for a moment. There's a technical reason that that land should not be developed. It's a technical reason. People shouldn't be able to die because we haven't thought about it. And j several generations of town supervisors, and I've been grateful for this process that we've put in place, but your predecessors and whoever was on these boards previously neglected this issue, and I can't find a different word to use, it's been neglect. How a major portion of a town like this, where a quarry, a dangerous thing to have in any location, is neglected on, on, on this basis, uh, can, and now we're, we're jumping from the technical issue to deciding whether we want to build or not. The, the committee should be focused on resolving that technical issue first, not deciding if we're going to have homes or mixed use or anything else. And that should be the focus of the committee. Leaving that aside, my, my desire would be for us to buy that land. The town needs to create the options for itself, the residents and the town. Buying it is buying an option. We don't know what the right use is in the future, but the current status is there should be a buffer, and that's the, the only thing we know at this point. Buying that land, um, as others have said, will increase taxes at, at a reasonable amount. I live across the street. I'm ready to pay those, those increases. But um, we need to start with the conversation. You know, I think it was Donna that said that the DEC filings are essentially a lie. Well, then what are the comprehensive plans? 
Aren't they in the same category? So we're having the wrong conversation. We're having the wrong conversation. We should be enforcing the plans that we have. Otherwise, why do plans? Thank you. Hi, young man. How are you? Good. Great. Thanks for being here. Thank you. My name is Hoyt, and I'm 10. I go to school at Indian Landing, and I'm speaking on my behalf, even though I'm in uniform. And I think that as a kid, I want some place to go camping or hiking with my family. I have five siblings from ages three to twelve, and I want something, and I want some place that we will be able to watch them while they run around and play freely in Penfield. And if we make a park, the playground, or hiking trails, that we will have more opportunities to do that. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you come up here for just a minute so we can just get your name for the record so we have that. Thank you very much. That was, that was a great job. Could you just give this uh, right, could you just give us uh, your name again, please? Hoyt Goodwill. Okay. okay. Hoyt, and the last name again? Goodwill. Goodwill, thank you. And uh, your address? Uh, 114 Gate Terrace. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming again. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, my name is Seth Williams. Uh, do you need current address? Uh, 45 Glen Hill Drive. Uh, soon, soon to be, soon to be Penfield Road address uh, shortly, in, right? Yep. Uh, Got it. We were displaced due, due to due fire. To fire. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so I came tonight for a merit ba uh, the communications merit badge. You need to attend a meeting and record uh, all the different viewpoints put forward. And I have a very large list uh, that I've compiled of the different viewpoint, uh, different arguments said tonight. And I do not have many that say that there should be a development for housing. I don't think there was one. I don't think there was one. <laughs> um, I've heard many, many arguments. I was not aware of this uh, debate until two days ago. And uh, I, I've heard many, many arguments uh, tonight and many very compelling uh, speeches given by the many people here. Um, I come from a generation who does not often, uh, does not often look forward to outdoors events, except I'm a Boy Scout. <laughs> and uh, through that, through my years of being a Boy Scout, I've learned, and through living in Penfield, I've learned how valuable our environment really is. And I believe that if we are con to continue to be uh, the planned, uh, what was our slogan? Town, town planned progress. Okay, <clears throat> so planned progress, and the plans about Dolmite are to, con were to, Ma maintain safety with Dolmite was to keep these open areas. I believe we should stick to those planned progress and wait uh, till Dolmite is a lake to, so that we will have high value property. And that's all I really have to say. Right. Thanks for coming, sir. Good evening. Good evening. These youngsters are the future of Penfield, future of our country, and I find it very heartwarming that so many people here today are all speaking uh, towards the future. My name is Douglas Fisher. I uh, live in Rochester. I'm an attorney. I'll fill out an address sheet for you. Uh, once upon a time, I was supervisor of the town of Victor back in the 1970s. It was smaller then, it's tripled in population since then, but we were facing a very similar issue about whether or not space should be preserved as parkland or subdivisions allowed, uh, the Ganondagan site. And there were many people, including political office holders, who felt, oh, we're going to get tax base from having houses. Let's do that. Let's fight having a state park there. And it was Irene Gossen, whom I called in for advice on this, who taught me 
houses cost more in the services that they require, education of children and so forth, than they provide in taxes. And so she helped guide our political strategy to preserve uh, the Ganondigan site. And uh, I'm here partly out of a thank you to her for that. Uh, I, I commend you for the nice statement that you issued on the town website and of course honoring her by flying the town hall flag at half staff. Um, I went to the dedication service uh, for, that Mindy McLaren put together for the Irene Gosson Nature Preserve. Irene Gosson was 97, it was just a month ago. And one of the things she said was how important it is to provide for the future. She was 97, looking to the future. And my fundamental point tonight is, if we had not done what was done in Victor to preserve open space at a time people thought, oh, we've got plenty of open space, we don't need to deal with it now, to which I replied, yeah, but the only open space that would be left years hence would be the not so desirable. Here, that's what could happen here. You've got space right in the heart of a very important area, well populated. If you don't take this now as open space, you'll have what's happening up at uh, you know, the corner nearby here. It'll all just disappear. And it's so important to act well, you still have the opportunity. There are many dedicated people here who are working on various scenarios as to how you can achieve this, but my fundamental point is you've got to act while you can, while the opportunity is still here. And if you act, you will be bringing unto yourself the same approval and um, appreciation that Irene Gosson deserves for what she did 40 years ago, you can have the same approbation for yourselves, and I encourage that to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. I'm Hi, Julie Wilting. I'm here because I just read this article in my Nature Conservancy magazine about how our park system in this country were developed. They were developed basically by a few people being brave enough to stand up and do something about it. I grew up on the coast of Maine uh, near Acadia National Park and it, and it it was probably our first national park. It's the most beautiful spot and growing up in Maine is beautiful because you had at that time we had the, uh, practically the whole state to roam in and it was safe, safe place. And I have skied down over uh, the uh, area of shadow pines in the winter and the, over those little hills and through those trees and it's just the most beautiful spot in the world and some of the things that have happened in this town during since 1953 when I came here have put a big dent in my heart but then other things have been uh, really good. Thank you very much. Thanks, Hello. Good evening. My name is Shalom Wurzberger. I live in 35 Huntington Meadows. And uh, I listened with a lot of interest. I came in late, but I listened with a lot of interest to some of the comments. And they touched the fact that there is a buffer needed between the quarry and the rest of the residential area. I am not sure if this can be substantiated by law that such a buffer area is required and I'm told that at this point we cannot really regulate at least for a while the activities in the quarry itself. However, selling this property is a question of business case for the seller and for the buyer. And I think that we should make it very, very clear if we cannot make the issue of a business case towards the seller, we can relatively easily make it not a very good business case for the buyer. We can do so by enforcing 
buffer zone uh, in terms of building regulation. Because if the only building you can build there is going to be $700,000 to buy, because it has to withstand superbly rigid safety requirement made by town engineers, um, I don't know how many of those are going to be built. And I have a little bit of knowledge about how explosive waves travel. In a rock, they travel very rigidly. They, they basically do not dissipate. And my understanding is that most of this area is very shallow rock. I would submit that a geological survey can show that, and, and actually I believe that there are people that can calculate it. I do not know that for certain, but I suspect that the, we can create simulations that will show the propagation of shock waves, the speed, the velocity, the, 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 the intensity, and therefore justify a special safety level from any structure that are going to be erected in, um, in both Shadow Pine and Shadow Lake. And if that will be the case, and it's done fast enough, I believe that whoever is, going to lo is looking now at buying this land is going to question again whether or not it makes sense at least at the price that they suggest, because again, we just, we did not do it maliciously, but for the safety of those people who will live on those houses, we demand that, like every house here has to stand the, the building codes of the, of the town. In an area that is more or less exposed to an earthquake once a day, you have to build it so that it will be able to stand such requirement, such uh, rigors. And I suggest that if we are going to concentrate on this technical issue, develop the building code for that area, excuse me, I apologize, I should have shut it down. I apologize for that. Um, I believe that we can make it at the very least a good idea for the seller in this case to sell it to the town at a reasonable price, as somebody else suggested, far lower than the 3-2, because they'll have no other buyers. That's... Hey, guys. Guys. Yeah. Jim. Jim. Got one right there. Thank you. Thanks, Kaz. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Supervisor, I'm Tom Trevett. Uh, my, Margaret and I live at 47 Canyon Trail. I'd like to put the subject in a little different light. Uh, Doug Fisher came as close as anyone tonight to uh, putting it in the light I'd like to put it in, but not quite. Um, it's not every night or every day that you and the town board members have a chance to uh, deal with something that could cause you to be considered visionaries. I know every day you come up with uh, problems uh, with, that need uh, solutions, um, pothole problems that, uh, between neighbors and uh, so forth, but this problem or this issue gives you a chance, I think, to uh, become thought of as real visionaries. The Shadow Pines property is really a unique piece of uh, topography in town. There are other pieces of topography that are also unique in town, such as what the uh, uh, glaciers did to the property up and down uh, Panera Trail. Uh, the property that uh, the Dolomite organization has been uh, working for all these years, also very unique. And uh, the town hasn't yet dealt with the 
quarries in a visionary way. Now I know that as you planned your business for the year, uh, you probably hadn't thought of, or at least two years ago you hadn't thought of, this issue of Shadow Pines not being a golf course. All of a sudden it kind of dropped in your laps. And when it dropped in your laps, I'm sure folks came and said, uh, Mr. Supervisor, uh, that should stay a golf course. Or Mr. Supervisor, we could use some more playing fields. Or Mr. Supervisor, we'd like to build a lot of homes there. Well, the signs around town ask that the town come together and save Shadow Pines. And I would like to ask you not to save it just for the golfers. There are plenty of golf courses around. Not to save it just for the athletes. There are plenty of playing fields around. And certainly don't save it just for the developers because there's lots of undeveloped land on the eastern side of the Genesee River. I urge you to seriously think about saving it for the future of the town of Penfield. Now, it's impossible for any of us to sit here and think five, five uh, years down the road or 10 years down the road to know what kinds of things are gonna be pressing needs of the community with any certainty. And therefore, I think it would be a, really a waste of time for the board to sit and wring your hands about one need over another, playing fields versus development, development versus golf course. We just can't anticipate that far in the future what issues might be the most important to tackle at that time. So the best plan really is, I think, to be visionaries, to make the investment that could have been made many years ago, um, make a decision that's consistent with how the taxpayers have, have been uh, brought to think about this property for the last 60 years or so, uh, deal with it consistent with what the owners and uh, operators of the property have told the state of New York it could expect the property to be put to use. Finance the purchase of the property, save it for the future needs that uh, will certainly uh, come to the attention of the people who run the town 10, 15 years, 20 years from now. And as the town has now a much more, uh, the town has a very adequate rainy day fund in terms of cash, money in the bank. Uh, the purchase of this property by the town would be putting this land in the bank for the future needs of the town. Now one of the things that strikes me is that uh, the town has done a very good job appointing our town historian. She's a very talented lady, works very hard. Um, it might be looked at at this point that this issue is not a historical issue, but I'm sure you recognize that as soon as this meeting is called to an end tonight, this issue will become current history so give your town historian some current history to write about. Fulfill your responsibilities to the town, not just today's voters, but the future voters of the town, the future residents of the town. Take the opportunity to be visionaries, to be seen as visionaries, and purchase this property for the future of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, and then the gentleman uh, after uh, the chief. Thank you, Kaz. Supervisor, I'm not going to be redundant or try not to be redundant anyway in what I say tonight. But I thank you and the, the town board and the committee for not only the work, but the, uh, the consideration that's being given to, to what the future of the town is going to be, and the fact that uh, you've allowed so many open meetings like this forum tonight and the, you know, the television broadcasts, even though they may not be the best, <laughs> there's still a method of communications for the folks that, that can't get here or can't get to the meetings. I think if I could, I'd like to recommend a couple of proactive things. and. 
One of them is in the area of traffic that people have referred to on Huntington Meadow, and I've probably seen more of my neighbors here tonight than I have in the last couple of months because you just can't walk on the road anymore to a neighbor's house. Uh, we have law enforcement in this county. We have an excellent sheriff's department that is loaded down with calls for service. When there's a complaint, or at least any time that I've mentioned it to the sheriff or to the zone commander, they've always provided a car to do a short-term study. But the, the reality is they can't assign people to that street. They don't have enough to sit on a street waiting for something to happen, speeding or reckless driving, because they're always needed for calls that are current. They're happening then. They can't sit and wait for something to happen. I think if we also ask the state police to uh, go around their policy that says they won't enforce traffic uh, laws on anything other than state roads, if we invite them into the town of Penfield, into this area where uh, Atlantic Avenue is suffering, where Whalen Road is suffering, where Huntington Meadow is suffering because of the traffic that's here now, we might be able to control some of the traffic flow in the future, or at least get a better idea of the traffic flow, or force it in some other direction that that may be better for them. Uh, the state police are not dispatched by 9-11 unless there is no other law enforcement officer or from a town or the city available to respond to a call. So they seem to have, at all the law enforcement agencies in Monroe County, they seem to have a wealth of time that they could at least dedicate to the town in enforcing the, the state laws. Some of our problems are solved by education, others by enforcement, others by engineering. Uh, we've tried, or the state has tried education through uh, motor vehicle laws or the education of our youth through uh, the, the permit tests and uh, defensive driving classes in high school. There are a lot of people that have gone to defensive driving classes, probably because they've gotten a ticket and they want to reduce their insurance rates. So th there is a problem out there, and the problem is one that seems to be faced by society today. We're becoming a me society. You know, it doesn't make any difference whether that's your neighborhood, it's not mine, so I can speed through. I can throw my litter on the side of the road from Burger King or wherever and let somebody else pick it up, let the residents pick it up. So I think we've got the opportunity to be proactive and asking the state police to work with the sheriff uh, to, to supplement the, the sheriff's forces in this region for the traffic enforcement that everybody seems to be talking about. And for engineering, we can put the 25 mile an hour speed limit signs back up on Huntington Meadow. They're gone, and the only law a police officer could enforce for speeding on that street is a statute called Speed Unreasonable and Prudent, and that is always fought in the courts as subjective. Unreasonable and prudent to whom? Our signs disappeared a year and a half ago, and they're left with yellow signs that recommend 25 miles an hour. And you might just as well take those down because those don't mean anything. They are no more than a recommendation, suggesting that people who will obey the law will drive that speed. It's not happening. I know it's not happening on Whalen Road. I know it's not happening on Huntington Meadow. The the problem can be resolved, it just takes resources, and it takes the ability to enforce the law. And if we take that away by removing signage, if we don't show sheriff's officers, state police there, they're doing enforcement, then it's gonna get worse, and it's gonna get worse, and it's gonna get worse. Whether we have the, the 250 homes with one car, whether they have two cars, uh, whether they have three cars, uh, the reality is, all of those cars may sit in their driveway, but they have fathers and mothers, cousins, nieces, uncles and aunts that have come to visit them. And that's going to add dramatically to the traffic. And I don't know if the traffic committee is considering that, but I know they're considering the volume. But I think it's important to consider that and the impact on the town. How much more is it going to cost us to maintain the roads? that are being traveled by all of these additional cars as well as the, the cars that are on there now. 
you know, the, the speed humps on Huntington were meant <clears> to <throat> slow traffic down. We put a, you put a new one in <coughs> last year, which was appreciated. Unfortunately, some of the vehicles that drive over those have worn those down, especially the tractor trailers that now frequent the road. Especially. So are you saying you want open space? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the open space still forces the problem that we have now. And there are also people that are becoming to the open space to enjoy the open space. So just having it open is not going to resolve all of our problems, and I think we need to recognize that too. There are going to be other problems that would be created by the open space, a lot less, <laughs> a lot less than if there, there were the houses put in that area with all the other problems that have been mentioned tonight. Thank you. Chief, what uh, your address on Huntington Metal One for the record? Thank you. Yep. I will get this gentleman first, and then, sir, you're after that. No, come right forward, please, sir. Anthony Palermo, I live at uh, 38 Huntington Meadow. I back up to the buffer space. Folks, if we could, uh, the respect for the speaker, please. Thank you. Go right ahead, Anthony. I, I compliment uh, you and all who have been working on this. I'm new to this issue. I uh, am a part-time resident now of Penfield. Uh, in the winters, I take the sunshine, but I've been here for 50 years, and I've uh, enjoyed living on Penfield or on Huntington Meadow uh, a great deal. Bill Sentner, who was referred to earlier, was my law partner. Uh, he uh, donated, I believe, some of that precious land that he had uh, along uh, Penfield Road to the, to the town. The issue that I think hasn't been addressed today that I'm just picking up on is the buffer zone. Apparently there's an obligation to keep a buffer zone. Is that in perpetuity? Uh, is, is it a contractual obligation that can be enforced once the uh, 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 um, blasting and the, and the dolomite uh, excavation uh, stops? I've seen it when we had just the excavation and a small portion <coughs> right at Whalen Road. And I've seen them move the the homestead of all the way up to Atlantic Avenue, and that's a gigantic hole now. But how long does that continue? And is there going to be a buffer zone after that stops? If not, what happens to that land? Is that too going to be subject to real estate development? So those are just additional issues which I think uh, uh, add to the problem and hopefully add to the solution because I think I support all of the arguments that I've heard here in, in uh, trying to preserve this for uh, the future of Penfield. I was raised uh, uh, on Humboldt and Winton. I used to walk the, the trails of Penfield when there was no big brown crop boulevard. I've, I've walked to run the Coit Bay and I still love it. I live in the wild right on Huntington Meadow and I hope you preserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Thomas Kinsman. I live at 34 Random Knowles Drive. I'd like you to do whatever you can to try to preserve this space. It's pleasant and beneficial for me, and there's studies that show this is relaxing, just to see open green space, <clears throat> as opposed to more cement, more concrete, more ticky-tack, whatever. So yeah, please do try to preserve it as best you can. The other point that nobody seems to be making is in the long, long haul, Houses generate carbon dioxide from oxygen. So a real green plan thinks about sustaining the planet, sustaining things in the long haul. That's all. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Do we have any first-time speakers? Yes, sir. And then uh, Tim Murphy. And then, yes. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Get all first-time speakers first. Oh, so, sorry. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy Harris, 1851 Clark Road. Um, everything's been said. Um, the biggest thing is let's be trendsetters and do the right thing and save Shadow Pines. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Joan Van Dyne. I live at 23 Little Spring Run in Fairport. I formerly lived at 1777 Scribner Road in Penfield. 
I was there for 18 years approximately. My husband and I restored the old farmhouse on the corner of Scribner and Atlantic. Let me tell you, you need to save that space. Do everything you can. It is absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, talk about aftershock, believe me, when I first moved into that house, I thought somebody dropped a bomb. The whole house shook, yet that house is stood there on that corner since 1820. That's how well it was built. And I am in favor, and I will help you in any way I can to support you saving that beautiful space. Not only is it beautiful, it is historical. It is the Clark House, one of the first settlers here in Penfield. There is a burial site there for their ancestors. And we don't know how many are buried there because so many of the stones have been taken. They were just stones, just a big old stone that somebody scraped with a rock that here lies my son or here lies my daughter. And then there were newer markers put that, that are visible today that you can see. But not only is that site historical, I'm sure if you start digging homes, basements and things like that, you're gonna find Indian arrowheads or spears because we found some that were this, this large when we were digging for footings for a cellar Bilko door. Now, um, I gave everything, all my literature, to the woman that lives there now, of all the history and research that I did. But believe me, I feel that that is a historical area. I mean, they came down there with the Indians, they fought, I'm sure, on those hills. And please, if I can help you in any way, please let me know. Thank you. Hi, Tim. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Tim Murphy, 48 Corral Drive. I have uh, six specific inputs for the moratorium committee. First and foremost, uh, I also support buying the open space uh, now as a priority. And the perspective I see on it is time. The committee's already had four meetings. There's only one or two left. And there's certainly a lot of things to be considered here. So again, getting out there and buying the land and then looking at it with a long-term view, put a commission or board together to look at it is my first input. Second, um, when, I, when I watched the, uh, the, the very first committee meeting, it was said that the, the quarry should be out of scope. And, and I disagree. And I think it needs to be in scope for all the reasons that people have said tonight, specifically about the buffer. There's just so much conversation around that. I think it absolutely positively has to be part of the conversation in the charter of the board. Third, as a participant uh, to the 10 year master plan and after reviewing it, the quarry is actually not shown on there. And I think it needs to be updated. The master plan was actually created, I believe, or adopted in 2010, and it's done every 10 years. We're six years into it. If it isn't a priority right now, it should be to update that master plan, at least make it current. Because some of the conversation that, that, that's been had around zoning is that you can change zoning, but you have to show the intent of the community, and that master plan is one of the pillars of it. Uh, fourth, Please, please talk about reestablishing the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. I participated on it for 12 years. It was abolished in 2011. It's one of the voices of the community. Penfield was looked at as, as the leader in Monroe County for all the great things we did. Now granted, there's operational costs that go along with building ball fields and lacrosse fields and the like, but that's a voice of the community and that needs to be part of the ongoing conversation. Um, Supervisor LaFountain, yesterday I took you up on the offer. Jeff and I sat down with you to try to understand uh, the last five years of budget because there's some conversation about fund balance, the term that's used around reserves. And honestly, I didn't get the answer that I hoped for. I did go look at the financial statements today, but it's work to be done and I think the moratorium committee should be looking at what kind of assets does the town have, financial assets, to bring to the conversation, to maybe bring to the solution. You know, we've talked about a bond. Maybe the town has some of the money already in its coffers to, to, uh, to add to that. Um, and finally, um, 
I was one of the people that a month ago went on the town's website and authored three questions. Now I got the automatic reply that they were received, but I haven't heard anything about you know input, questions, and again, if I look at the timeline and the charter of the committee, if they've already had four or, or uh, four or five meetings and they only have one or two left, as it was suggested earlier and as I look at it, when is the, the opportunity to look at the input that we ha had submitted weeks ago going to come to the surface? So that's my input. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, my name is Jennifer Luisi. I live at 8 Shadow Creek Drive in Penfield. It's just south of Wayland Road, and so I live pretty close to Shadow Pines. We also feel our house shake. I'm also the president of the Cobbles Elementary PTA, and I have three kids going to Cobbles next year. Go me. All of them will be in school finally. <laughs> Um, what I'm concerned about, and what hasn't quite been mentioned yet, um, I'm also concerned about the overcrowding in schools, obviously. My concern is primarily for my children. When this, these houses, if they are approved, will get built, they will probably be built a lot faster than any new school buildings will have. So there's a very, there's, also, there's the, the cost issue of, yes, well, our taxes will get raised because we'll need to build a new school. But there's also the very real impact on our children because our, our most of our schools are pretty much at capacity now. I grew up in Southern California. I know what it's like going to a very overcrowded school. It's not fun. And I don't want that for my children. That's why I live here. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Other, other first time speakers? Thank you. Hi, my, my name is uh, Jeffrey Woodworth. I'm the eldest son of Dr. Hugh Woodworth, who used to be a prominent physician in the Penfield area. Um, I first heard of about this uh, through my brother Rick. He's my youngest brother. I also have another brother, Bill, who lives in Victor, and my two other uh, sibling sisters. One lives in Idaho, and the other lives in Wisconsin. Um, I'm, I, I wasn't planning on coming to this meeting tonight. I actually first heard about this through my youngest brother, Rick, who lives in Henderson, Nevada. Um, we purchased, uh, actually my father purchased a property on, on Mountain Road. My mother currently lives at 89 Mountain Road and we're on the west side uh, of the golf course. Um, I guess this is a heartfelt, uh, I just like to express my heartfelt and I'm here on behalf of my siblings that um, it's an absolutely beautiful area. I am a current resident in Greece, New York and um, I remember growing up as a, as a, a kid and it, it was not developed at all and I remember <clears throat> uh, hanging out with my friends and and uh, enjoying, enjoying the nature at the time. But it is an absolutely, someone used the word pristine area. It is a beautiful area. And as one who is a, residence, a resident of Greece, New York, I envy this side of town and the beauty that is here. The, the beech trees, the maple trees, you will not find a more beautiful scenery. It's one of, this is one of the most beautiful places in, in Monroe County. So when you have people calling you and uh, from around the country, from Henderson, Nevada, from Idaho, from Wisconsin, and my brother who now lives in Victor, this isn't just about, um, you know, this, this isn't just about, um, putting up homes. This is about history. This is about people's hearts. Um, it is a beautiful area and I, I concur with everything that has been spoken here to, tonight that we, that, that we preserve this beautiful place. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
First time speakers? Mindy? No? Any other first time speakers? Carol? Thank you for an opportunity to say one, a couple more things. One thing I learned in sitting at the moratorium committee meeting was that cluster homes could be considered a single residence. So that could be connected townhouses, could be one residence, so therefore could be multiple family dwellings as one residence. Think about the multiplication of that. And the other thing that I think so much about is the egress. If that is developed as residential, it has to have two egresses. No, it doesn't. Doesn't? No. So the lane doesn't have two egresses. Okay. Uh, let's let's well, allow the speakers to speak, please. If it, if it seemed feasible to have two ways to get in and out of a property then, out of a development, think about Clark Road as being one of those sites. Okay, I walk that nearly every day with my dog. Did have two, now one. And it is treacherous. In the winter time, Huntington Meadow is almost impassable. I need a helicopter to go from my house at least to the shoulder on Clark Road. But um, where would you put those egress entrances? If you come down from Whalen Road down the hill, whoops, you go around the curve that then comes to Huntington Meadow, would that be a good place for a traffic light? Because you couldn't see the light before you got to it. If you come down from Browncroft and you come down Clark Road, you're coming down around a curve and a hill and, oh, there's another traffic light. I don't think any of those, either of those possibilities is a safety feature and I really would abhor having that situation. I think a traffic light would be needed in order to safely get out of a development on the Shadow Pines property. Thank heavens we haven't heard anybody suggesting that was a good idea tonight. I think uh, just a point of clarification, I'm going to recognize a member of staff, uh, Mr. Valentine, Mr. Costello. Uh, a comment was made about clustering considered one, one unit. Um, would uh, either one of you just like to comment on that, please? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Jim Costello. It's not really correct. Clustering really, um, what it does is it allows you to have no more development than you would be entitled to under the, if you were to spread it out as you normally think of your properties to spread out. For instance, if, if the site were allowed to have 255 homes, you could take those homes and cluster them into 255 townhouse units, which would then leave space for the rest of the property in the area where you cluster. It's called, it's called Town Law 278. If anybody's interested, you can look it up. Stand Not a problem. It's just it's, I, I just, it's, I just you know, yeah. want to make sure that uh, you know the, the record is is that's uh, right. clear. So. It's, it's it's a learning exercise, and that's fine. So that's that's what it is. It's cluster development under Town Law 278. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Yes. I was down, uh, hi, Robin Pajeric, 18 Huntington Meadow. I was down in uh, Pittsburgh and Henrietta today and I'm not sure where the cutoff is for whether this property was in actually in Pittsburgh or in Henrietta, but there was some green space they had near their golf course down there and the town allowed it to be developed for, um, and I can't tell if they were townhouses or just very small houses clustered close together. It's listed as being green way, green something or other. The developer bulldozed every single tree. There's not a single tree other than the lane you drive up in to get to. And are we prepared to have developers come in and bulldoze every tree that's on that property? No. Th thanks a lot. Donna? 
I would just, uh, my name is Donna Spinella. Uh, I'd like to just make one small but fervent a request of the members of the moratorium committee. And that is not to be timid, to be bold and to be brave, and to be thinking of the future for the good of the whole town and the sorts of decisions that you have to make and the sorts of recommendations that you have to make. Fortune favors the bold. If we constrain our thoughts narrowly, we will never achieve the sort of vision that helped our town have the character it has now, maintain that character for future generations, and as my good friend Tom Trevett pointed out, have the sort of vision that will carry this town forward in beautiful, thoughtful ways that have certainly not been evidenced in some of our surrounding towns. So just a call out to the moratorium committee members. Thank you. Uh, I will say, in defense of the uh, committee members, uh, I haven't found a timid member of the committee yet. Uh, my guess is, is that probably won't start uh, as they complete their process. Is there anyone else uh, that has not spoken that would like to address uh, the uh, moratorium committee on this, uh, on this particular matter, uh, specifically as it relates to future uses of the Shadow Lake? and Shadow Pines. I haven't heard a lot about Shadow Pines or Shadow Lake tonight, only Shadow Pines. Uh, would anyone like to comment about Shadow Lake? Okay. I'm just sensing that the Shadow Lake folks weren't feeling the love. I would, I would just make a quick comment that, uh, I mean, what I, I would like to see happen would be that that there is a town bond, that a bond in 2002, there was a bond for $10 million that we, that we refill the coffers and that we have enough money that we can have an ongoing open space plan. The original open space plan wasn't intended to be a one-shot deal. It was intended to keep going. And there isn't a funding mechanism for it now. So, but concerning Shadow Lake, we need to have a funding mechanism and we need to re uh, implement that bond and have enough money so that we could look at possibilities of uh, having the development rights for Shadow Lake. So Shadow Lake has been purchased by the Odenbox. Uh, there may be something that can be negotiated <coughs> so that we could purchase the development rights and it could be rezoned for conservation use or open space. Thank you. Other comments? Okay. Seeing no other uh, comments, I'll bring this uh, meeting uh, to, uh, to an end. Uh, I would encourage, uh, certainly if you have any uh, comments that you would like to add to what was already said tonight, uh, I would encourage you to go on penfield.org and click on the shadows and uh, add that. Uh, all of that information will be rolled up to the committee um, at the close of uh, June 30th so that they've got that for their next uh, series of meetings. Thank you for everyone that participated. Thank you again to uh, the moratorium committee for your work and the work that uh, you still have ahead of you. Uh, thank you for coming this evening. Have a great, uh, great evening. Thank you.